Welcome to CoreLogic's housing market update for October 2022. CoreLogic reported a further fall in housing values through the first month of spring, with our National Home Value Index recording a 1.4% decline. Although values are still falling quite rapidly, the rate of decline eased from a 1.6% fall in August. The loss of momentum in the pace of value declines was evident across most of the capital cities and broad rest of state regions, with a few exceptions, including Adelaide and Perth, where housing values have only recently started to edge lower. Although the downwards trend in housing values has decelerated, it's probably too early to suggest the housing market has moved through the worst of the downturn. Possibly, we've seen the initial shock of a rapid rise in interest rates pass through the market, and most borrowers and prospective home buyers have priced in further rate hikes. However, if interest rates continue to rise as rapidly as they have since May, we could see the rate of decline in housing values once again accelerate. The reduction in the rate of decline occurred just as other indicators recorded improvements. Auction clearance rates trended upwards, albeit subtly, through September, and consumer sentiment nudged a little higher as well on the back of strong labour market conditions. Unusually for this time of the year, we've also seen the flow of fresh listings continue to decrease during the first month of spring, helping to keep a lid on overall advertised supply levels. After rising 25.5% over the recent growth cycle, housing values across the combined capitals index are now 5.5% below their recent peak, or in dollar terms down approximately $46,100. The combined regionals index, which recorded stronger growth conditions through the upswing, rising by almost 42%, peaked in June with values down 3.6% through to the end of September. This equates to a dollar value fall of approximately $21,700 for the combined regional dwelling values. Most cities continue to see a substantial buffer between the current housing values and where they were at the onset of COVID in March of 2020. At the combined capital city level, housing values would need to fall a further 13.5% before wiping out the gains of the recent growth cycle, while Melbourne, which saw a softer upswing compared to the other regions, with values rising 17.3% from the trough to peak, would only need to see a 4.3% fall in values before returning to pre-COVID levels. At a time when the flow of new listings is typically ramping up, Australia's spring selling season is off to a slow start. The number of new listings added to the capital city housing markets through September was 12% lower than the same period a year ago and 10% below the previous five-year average. It seems prospective vendors are prepared to wait out the housing downturn rather than try to sell under more challenging market conditions. We haven't seen any evidence of distressed sales or panic selling through the downturn to date. In fact, it's been the opposite, with the trend in newly listed properties continuing to diminish at a time when freshly advertised stock levels would normally be moving through a seasonal ramp up. The reduced flow of new listings to the market could be a key factor helping to keep a floor under larger price falls, supporting the subtle reduction in the rate of decline through September. While the flow of freshly advertised housing stock has slowed, so too has buying activity. Capital city sales activity through the September quarter was estimated to be 12.2% lower than a year ago, but still about 6.5% above the previous five-year average for this time of the year. Fewer buyers can be put down to a combination of factors including a substantial reduction in borrowing capacity as interest rates have risen, low consumer sentiment, and a fear of paying too much as prices fall. CoreLogic's National Rental Index increased by 0.6% in September. That's the lowest monthly rise in rent since December 2021. At the national level, rental growth moved through a peak back in May of 2022 with a 1% rise. Since that time, the monthly pace of rental growth has been easing. This trend in rent is evident across most of the regions, but has been clearest across regional Australia, where monthly rental increases have reduced from a peak of 1.4% in January of 2021 to just 0.3% in September of 2022. A gradual slowdown in rental growth in the face of such low vacancy rates could be an early sign that renters are reaching an affordability ceiling. Since the onset of COVID, capital city rents have risen by 16.5% and regional rents are up 25.1%. It's likely renters will be progressively seeking rental options across the medium to high density sector where rents are cheaper or maximizing the number of people in the tenancy in an effort to spread higher rental costs across a larger household. Perth's housing market notched up a second consecutive month of falling home values, however the rate of decline remains mild relative to the larger cities. 
Home sales are holding up, with estimates for the September quarter indicating buying activity was 5% higher than a year ago and 45% above the five-year average. At the same time, advertised stock remains in short supply, trending lower through September to be 15% below levels at the same time last year and 35% below the five-year average. Perth continues to show the lowest median house value of any capital city at $585,000, which helps to explain why demand hasn't been impacted by lower borrowing capacity and higher interest rates. The most important factor influencing housing markets will continue to be the trajectory of interest rates. The level at which interest rates will stabilize remains highly uncertain. The cash rate has surged 225 basis points between May and September. Interest rates haven't risen at this fast a pace since 1994, when households were arguably less sensitive to a sharp rise in the cost of debt due to lower overall debt levels. Financial markets are now pricing in a peak in the cash rate around 4.1% between June and August of next year, while private sector economists are generally less bearish, with Bloomberg recently reporting a median forecast of 3.35% as the peak cash rate in the first quarter of next year. The good news is that inflation may be moving through a peak. With the recent release of a monthly CPI indicator, it looks like headline inflationary pressures may have eased a little through the September quarter, with the ABS reporting a reduction in the annual inflation rate from 7% over the year ending July to 6.8% over the year ending August. If inflation is slowing, we could see the RBA start to ease back on the aggressive rate hiking cycle that commenced in May. Once interest rates stabilize, housing prices are likely to find a floor. Considering most economists are forecasting rates to peak through the first quarter of next year, the coming months are likely to feature further declines in home values. Strong labor market conditions should help to contain any material rise in mortgage distress. With the national unemployment rate at 3.5% in August and wages growth picking up, we aren't expecting to see a material rise in distressed listings or forced sales. We will be watching for any signs of market distress as the dual impact of higher interest rates and high inflation impact on household budgets. To date, the flow of new for sale listings has actually trended lower as vendors retreat to the sidelines. That's a good indicator that homeowners are weathering the downturn. As interest rates continue to rise and inflation remains high, it's reasonable to expect that household spending will pull back. While we're yet to see any evidence that household spending is being reined in, it's likely that households will need to curtail their discretionary spending in order to maintain their debt servicing obligations, while also dealing with higher prices on non-discretionary goods such as food and fuel. For buyers, stock levels have normalized across the most expensive capital city markets, providing more choice and a better negotiation position. More broadly, the opportunity presented by lower housing prices and less competition is likely to become more attractive for buyers as the housing downturn progresses. For sellers, conditions have become more challenging amid less demand, which means pricing expectations will need to be realistic. Vendors may need to be willing to negotiate on price and ensure they have a quality marketing campaign behind the property. As we move through spring and into early summer, it will be important to see if this deceleration in the rate of decline persists. You can keep up to date with housing market trends via the research pages at corelogic.com.au.